I'm Sandra Pollock, and I have another great guest, another friend. You won't be surprised. Her name is Nirmala Bujani. Nirmala, welcome to Inspiring You. Thank you, Sandra. Great to be here. And it's great to have you here. Nirmala, Nirmala is a journalist, and you are also the author of a wonderful book called um, Ordinary Women, Extraordinary Lives. Yes, yes. I am. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But what I'd like um, to find out a little bit about is, you know, where did you start? When you first came to Leicester, what was it like? I came to Leicester 27 years ago. Sandra. That long? <laughs> My little one was just one year old. Yes. And she's 28 now. That's mm. how I remember. Yes. <laughs> it was, yeah. And uh, I was actually a journalist. Mm. I had been writing in India. In fact, when I did qualify, I was 20 and I interviewed Indira Gandhi. Wow. I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. And then I I got married, went to Malawi. Mm -hmm. I was there for five years before I came to Leicester. Right. Mm -hmm. So it is a long time Mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. And what what was it like? Because obviously you, you were quite established in India. What was it like when you came to Leicester? It was a total culture shock for me because it was like being in India 50 years ago. Yes, yeah. And uh, Leicester was still a very small town. I came from a very cosmopolitan city Mm -hmm. called Pune, which is near Bombay. Mm -hmm. It was called the Oxford of the East. It was great for education Mm -hmm. because people from all over the world came to study in Pune. Mm -hmm. And then I found Leicester to be a very close-knit community, but uh, not as forward-thinking as my hometown of Pune in India. So what were some of the challenges that you encountered? The biggest challenge was uh, being an Indian woman. Mm -hmm. I often had people say to me on the bus, do you speak English? And when I would have a conversation with them, they'd look surprised and say, Oh, you speak good English. Mm -hmm. And I'd say to them, well, I should because I've got a degree in English literature. Right. And that was surprising for many people. For many of them because they were used to a lot of Asian people who didn't speak, who had stayed here for many years but had still not learned the language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and what else? I mean, what was your career? What did you do? When I came here, I had a little girl who was only a year old Mm -hmm. then and a five-year-old. So obviously I was looking for part-time work and uh, I went off to the job centre after Mm -hmm. being told, oh, they're very racist, you're never going to get a job. Yeah. And surprisingly, the first interview I had, I got a job at Dixon's. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. So I started working at Dixon's where they asked me how many languages I spoke. Mm-hmm. And I told them I spoke eight Indian languages eight. as well as English and French. So what, what, tell us those Indian languages. I speak Hindi, which is the national language in India. Yes. Gujarati, because I was living in a Gujarati extended family with my in-laws. Mm-hmm. Sindhi, which is my mother tongue. Right. Marathi, which is the state language of Maharashtra where I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Punjabi, because a lot of my friends and neighbors spoke Punjabi. Punjabi. Mm -hmm. Urdu, Mm -hmm. another common language of India. Yes. And uh, the eighth one was, trying to remember, Mm -hmm. Chicheva, which I learned in Malawi. Okay. So I spoke eight languages and I'd also studied in English in a convent school and learned French at school. (laughs) That's amazing. (laughs) I can just do it with the English. (laughs) Right, yeah. so you, you got a job in, in, in Dixon's? Dixon's, mm-hmm. yes, because they were actually expecting an influx of Asian people right. then. Yeah. The temple on Oxford Street yes. was going to be opening, yes. and uh, they wanted someone who spoke Gujarati, mm-hmm. and when they heard that I did, they were quite happy to take mm-hmm. me on straight mm-hmm. away. And did you get to use that a lot in, in your yes. job? Mm -hmm. I did. I started off at Dixon's Mm -hmm. and uh, within six months I'd actually been offered a job with Leicester Libraries. Again, they were looking for someone with language skills and because I do read and write a lot of the Indic languages as well. Mm -hmm. So they wanted someone who would be buying the English and the Indian language stock. So we Mm. then 
had an exchange mm -hmm. of interviews and I started working at Leicester Libraries yeah. as okay. a librarian. So what was it like culturally? Because there were you obviously mm -hmm. progressing and having your own job and that sort of thing. Was, yes. was that different to what was expected in your culture? Yes. I think because I had young children, it wasn't very easy because I had family responsibilities, but also my extended family because I was living with the in-laws and there was always uh, the expectation that I'd dress in a sari, yeah. I would be a typical Gujarati housewife mm -hmm. and a daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, they weren't very happy about me going off every day to work, to work. at the library. Mm -hmm. Also, while I was working at the library, the Leicester Mercury were looking for a journalist who would be doing stories of all the Ugandan Asians. Yes. And mm -hmm. I was actually recommended to them. Wow. So I ended up doing a series of features on Ugandan Asians in yes. Leicester mm -hmm. because they were having a big silver jubilee then. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I got that's into amazing. working with the Leicester Mercury. Yes. So obviously I was out most evenings yes. covering events and mm -hmm. interviewing people, doing features. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a lot for them to deal yes. with. Yes. And they didn't really want me to be was, doing all of those yeah, things. More yes. it was my husband, my ex husband, who was not very happy with mm -hmm. me having such a Successful busy career. life, <laughs> such a busy life, yes. and also he wanted me to be at home mm -hmm. and you know make chapatis and do mm -hmm. all the traditional stuff. So at that time, there were were there not very many um, Asian uh, women married yeah. with children that had a career like that. A lot of Asian women in Leicester worked in factories and were yes. doing you know hosiery and making things, but uh, it was not common then. Mm -hmm. I didn't meet many Asian women who had careers yes. and uh, were mums at the same time. Yes, so yes. so you, you've always been the exception to the rule, really. I think so. <laughs> I couldn't yes. just sit at home and yes. stay and do as I was mm -hmm. told. So tell me a little bit about what you do now, because I know that you do a lot of work with oh. women. And we look at the title of your book, Ordinary Women, Extraordinary Lives. I mean, where did that all come from? When my younger daughter started going to nursery. I was quite inspired by some of the mothers at the Mellor Primary School yeah. where I was a governor. And uh, we realized that there wasn't uh, any after-school clubs for mm -hmm. mums who worked. Yes. So everybody had to be at the school gates about mm -hmm. quarter past three and it was difficult if you had a job yes. to get there. So a lot of mums were not working. Yeah. And... Uh, I then set up a campaign called the Belgrave Community Child Care Campaign mm -hmm. where we decided we'd all be fighting and petitioning yes. and got city council then to set up after school clubs wow. in the Belgrave area mm -hmm. so the children of working mothers yes. could actually be looked after till we got back and picked them up yes. after yes. five o'clock. Do you remember how long it took you to get that? A long time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. We campaigned. All the mums at Mellor got together. Then we went around all the other schools yes. in Belgrave. There was mm -hmm. Abbey Primary, Catherine Juniors, and then got petitions mm -hmm. and actively got involved till we, within a year or so, yes. we got the funding wow. to set up the after-school yeah. care. That's amazing because a lot of these things exist now and people don't know the history yes. and how they came about. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the rest of the city got them as, because yes. as soon as Belgrave got after-school clubs, all the others Everybody wanted else. them as yes, well. Yes, why not? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, that was in the 80s, mm -hmm. early 90s mm -hmm. when this happened. Yeah. After that, I got quite involved with community activities yes. and started campaigning for more facilities. Yes. I was also then going through my own journey of becoming a single parent mm -hmm. because I decided that I needed to get out of a restricting marriage yeah. and move ahead. Yes. And uh, I actually left home. But I have always been on very good terms with my in-laws mm -hmm. because... 
they were always the grandchildren of yes. my two yeah. girls. Yes. So yes. we kept yes. on good terms. So, I mean, is it correct that you actually stayed in a women's refuge for a while? I did. Mm -hmm. I had to move into the roof yes. and then into Apnagar, which is still in Leicester. It's mm -hmm. now run by Sanctuary mm -hmm. Housing Association. But in those days, it was the first ever housing association run shelter, which was run mm -hmm. by Azra. Yes. So it was for Asian mm -hmm. women. But mm -hmm. now they, they, I'm proud to say that mm -hmm. because I'm still in touch with them and yes. I run a group there at mm -hmm. the moment mm -hmm. and they are now for all women yes, yes. so it's very multicultural so you, you want I know you run a group as you said for women what's your what's the objective why do you do this the group actually came about from a leadership training that the charity called diversity hub yes did with mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. at first it was called raising Asian women and the training was a two-day intensive training for Asian women who were... And you did that along with other people? Yes. yes. I was actually coordinating the training yes. with Margaret and Liz from Diversity yes. Health. Mm -hmm. And then, after the two days, the next training we decided we would open it to all women. So it was called Raising mm -hmm. All Women. Mm -hmm. And then we had about 25 women yes. who were all now trained to be leaders yes. and take on leadership of their own lives. Yes. They had all been through difficult circumstances, yes. such as domestic violence. A lot of them were single parents. Mm -hmm. A lot of them had suffered abuse in many forms, yes. either from their own families or from their extended families. Yes. Yes. So it was something I really wanted to do all mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you, you've done it and you're doing it. Yes, okay. I am. I mean, at some point, we, 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 mm. we're going to come to what may be the end of our lives and mm. we may get the opportunity to look back. So if you look back on your life, what would you want it to be? Or what would you like to be said about your life? I think I'm very proud of my book because mm -hmm. for me it was always a dream while I was a journalist, I met lots of inspirational women. Yes. Just like you. Thank you. I mean, Thank you're, you. <laughs> you're one of them. But there were others who had always wanted to achieve their dreams. Yes. And the fact that I was doing their stories, even if it was just for the Leicester Mercury, yes. I thought I wanted to bring some of them together mm -hmm. because they were all pioneers in many ways. Yes. The oldest was nearly 90. Wow. And she was the first teacher, the first mm. Gujarati lady yes. to come from Uganda. Yes. And she had been teaching wow. there and she carried on here. Mm -hmm. And she was then studying yes. at an adult education Asian. center. Mm -hmm. For me, that was just amazing. It is, yes. And I was really, really excited when I met her mm -hmm. and told her I was yes. going to do her, her story, story in yes. my book. Yes. The others, the, the youngest, mm -hmm. was also a young yoga teacher mm -hmm. who had become a single parent. Yes. And uh, all the ladies, it was just they all had overcome so much yes. to achieve their dreams. Yes. Yes. And that's what this book is about. Yeah, that's wonderful. Eight wonderful women. Wonderful. What is inspiration to you, Nirmala? Every day, everybody I meet. I mean, just yesterday, mm -hmm. I met a friend of mine just for coffee and a catch-up. And she was telling me she's just ma losing her job mm -hmm. because a lot of my friends are now going through redundancy. Yes. They're all in their 40s and 50s. It's very hard for them to move on and yeah. start a new career. Mm -hmm. But what I say to these ladies is this is a new chapter, a it new door opening Mm -hmm. And this is now your time for you. Yes. You've brought up the children. You've done what you can for your families. Now is when you should be doing what you want to do. Mm -hmm. For me, traveling is an inspiration. Yeah. Everywhere I go, I meet wonderful people. Yeah. I've just been to Alicante and yes. on the beach mm -hmm. chatting to this wonderful lady called mm -hmm. Maureen mm -hmm. who told me both her kidneys mm -hmm. were gone. Mm -hmm. And she didn't have long left before she needed a transplant. Yes. 
her doctor said to her, you know, Maureen, while you can still walk, go out and do what you want. Mm -hmm. And that that's was wonderful. a lesson for yes, me. Yes, it is. That's a wonderful lesson. And really, that sort of sums up what was going to be my last question, which was if you had the opportunity to say something to somebody, what would it be? It would be live life to the max. Yes. Just enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm, I think I'm really lucky. Mm -hmm. I have three grandchildren, one on the way, yes. and they keep me young. Mm -hmm. Just last week, me and my granddaughter were singing, we are the cheeky girls jumping <laughs> up and down, jump, and yes. entertaining my little baby granddaughter yes. who's only four months oh, old. Yes. And all I want is for my granddaughters mm -hmm. to remember that being a girl yes. is not a disadvantage. Not at all. I want them to grow up in a world where everybody's equal and valued, yes. and especially in India because they still have this culture where if a girl is born, mm -hmm. they say, oh, it's a girl. Mm -hmm. And I want every girl to grow up being proud of being a yes. woman. Okay. Namala Bojani, thank you so much for joining me. What an inspirational journey and what an inspirational story. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank okay. you, Sandra. You're welcome. I'm really, really glad to be here. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. So thank you for joining us. I hope that you found... Nirmala's story, inspirational, I certainly do. Every time we get together and talk, I really enjoy hearing about her life. The wonderful thing is there's so many people out there making a difference and we don't get to know about them and that's what Inspiring You is here to do, to bring these people, their stories, their journeys to you, to inspire your life, to motivate you and to get us all going. Thanks for joining us. This is Sandra Pollock saying bye-bye for now. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.